themes, that really is just a success in itself. And I'm pleased to say that Nick Worth, but despite having a very busy garage behind us as all of his guys are gearing up for qualifying, has found time to come and join us. Um, the first ever car designed on a computer. I imagine people were queuing up with computer says no jokes for you, but you arrived in Bahrain and you were quickest of the new teams. You must have been delighted. Yeah, it's, um, it's uh, nice to prove some of the naysayers wrong. Um, but uh, I think that side has sort of kind of paled into insignificance. The, the CFD's proved itself. We're getting the numbers we thought. Really, for us, the issue has been um, reliability, getting all the small gremlins out, and that's really dominated our pre-season and, in, in fact, uh, the early part of the season for us too. So a few small gremlins, you know, hydraulics issues and things, and I suppose a slightly bigger gremlin in that it looks like you haven't got a fuel tank big enough to race to the end of a Grand Prix. Um, just explain to us how that situation came about. Well, you know, um, for us, for this team, for Virgin Racing, um, you know, Formula One is about a technical challenge. Um, it's about pushing the boundaries. Um, and, uh, you know, the thing about the thing is, is that sometimes those boundaries move. Um, the thing which determines the size of a fuel tank is really a combination of the sporting regulations, the technical regulations, um, uh, the type of fuel you use and, uh, and how much fuel the engine uses. And for us, um, we kind of set the car up. We had to lock down the monocoque in June last year for our production schedules. And three of those uh, four things that actually changed between June and Bahrain. Um, and, uh, and really, we needed to get to Bahrain and see where we were before we, we made this dis difficult decision. How far are you? Out, you know, how far were you out in your calculations? Because presumably your engine supplier, Cosworth, would say, "Look, this is how much fuel it's going to use per lap." You know what the longest race is, so you could set it by by that. Well, actually, if you go through the, the little piece, pieces, I mean, if you remember the old days when we uh, for, when we used to do uh, races with a full tank, we used to do topping off on the grid, which w which was a sporting regulation, which wasn't clear at that time. So there's a little bit of fuel there. Um, the the numbers have been very consistent and they haven't been an issue. Probably the single biggest issue for us has been the fact that in June we thought we were going to get a high density fuel. Um, we were told we were going to get that and actually that changed in the middle of October at the Brazilian Grand Prix. Um, and uh, finally for us the technical regulations again in Brazil um, they changed and they said they wanted to do a, a big impact test with a full tank of fuel which caused us to have to change the construction of the monocoque. All these little things have added up and left us too marginal to be really comfortable. Was it a mistake to be too marginal, do you think, at the very beginning? I mean, it's, it's not like having a slightly too big a fuel tank would have cost you at the end of races, isn't it? And you need enough fuel to do that. It, it is, but, um, but you know, again, length, weight of the car and everything is all important. You know, we, we pushed the boundaries, we got it slightly wrong. Possibly we're not the only people to, uh, to, to, to make that mistake. Um, we're going to find out. This is this is quite a tough race. It's much tougher than Bahrain, and so I think we're going to see some interesting things here. Very quickly, Nick, how, how much will this affect your development of this car, having to work on increasing the size of the fuel cell? It's actually not too bad uh, for us. It's uh, it's a small modification to the monocoque um, and also some bodywork as well. But what we're going to do is introduce that along with other aerodynamic changes. Um, at one point, we're trying to get it for Barcelona, so we should be okay for this. It's not as bad as uh, as it may sound. You can't finish this race, though. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know. <laughs> Don't worry about them. Exactly. Hopefully, they won't run out of fuel. No. Um, the, um, you know, this race. There's so many factors in racing. This race is traditionally one of the worst ones for safety cars. You save a huge amount of fuel there. There's all sorts of strategies from sports car racing. We know about how to save fuel, but we want to go racing. We want to race hard. We're not here to make the numbers up, and that's why we decided to make this change. Okay. Well, I know that Timo's car. <laughs> so far this weekend. It's been another tough weekend for you, but fingers crossed for qualifying today. You can now stand here and enjoy the plane. And yes, I hope it doesn't run out of fuel.